Gigi's art tutorials. Today we're going to be drawing this tiger's eye. Um, I think it's quite important to focus on the individual parts of the animal before we move on to the whole thing. In another video I will be doing an entire drawing of a tiger, but for now we're just going to be working on the eye so that we can get the uh, details right. We're going to be using coloured pencils. Today I'm using my Derwent drawing set, but you can use any coloured pencils that you've got to hand as long as you've got uh, the kind of colours that we're going to need, which include black, white, orange and green. So whenever you're ready, grab a cup of coffee and let's get started. <laughs> So as you can see, the first thing I'm going to do is sketch out the eye in pencil. The reference photo that I'm using is in the top right hand corner of the screen for you to copy as well, or you can find your own one online. So I'm just mapping out the basic shape of the eye and the surrounding fur using a pencil. This part can be really messy, it's really just a guideline for when you start putting in your coloured pencils. Putting in the iris there and then marking out a little section that's going to stay white where the light reflects in the eye. One of the most important things I find with drawing animals, eyes and just doing realism in general is to really keep those highlights. It makes your image really pop and it makes it look super realistic. So the next thing I'm going to do is rub all of that out so that you can only just faintly see it so that you don't get some really strong pencil marks that come through when you start putting in your coloured pencils. So just go around with the rubber and make sure that you can only see it lightly. Here's my Derwent drawing set. I'm going to start with the darkest colours. Um, so I'm taking my chocolate pencil, which is a really super, super dark brown. And I'm going to fill in the darkest areas of the eye.
and that's just the outline of the eye as well as the iris which are pretty dark parts um my cycle didn't really turn out that round so <laughs> maybe yours could be a bit rounder than that but i think it works and then just adding in some shadows at the very top of the eye And then colouring in just beneath the eye as well, where there's that black section. I do start off pretty lightly, um, although I do fill in the dark areas first. I always go in quite lightly so that um, if I do make a bit of a mistake or my proportions aren't quite right, I can always change it later when I add in more colours. And just building up layer by layer those darkest sections. Okay, now I'm going to change colour and I'm going to pick my sanguine, which is like a dark orange sort of colour. Make sure that your pencils are super nice and sharp. Just so you can get loads of proper fine detail in there. And I'm going to start going around the outside of the eye. And with colour pencils, to get that realistic look, I do find it's quite a slow process of basically just building up layer upon layer. Um, and the more layers you have, the more depth your picture will have and the more realistic it will be. So it's definitely worth spending a bit of extra time building up each layer bit by bit. Drawing in those tiny little details that you can see on the eye. Again, that's kind of like a background layer. Once all the layers are on top, um, they should just sort of shine through from the back. Putting in my brown ochre now, which is a yellowy brownish colour. And blending out that orange. And this colour is basically like a base layer for the entire eye, I would say. The next colour I'm choosing is Pale Cedar. Sort of greeny grey colour. Again, just adding another layer, blending out the layer below. Swapping back to the chocolate for the dark colours and now switching up to the white. That's just filling in where that highlight is. As you can see, there's not really that much pencil in that section, just so it stays as bright as possible. White is always, always a great colour for blending out as well. Seems to just make everything kind of come together. It 
again going back and again with the chocolate around this time you can just sort of start switching up your colors so that you keep adding layer upon layer again i can't stress enough the importance of doing layers with colored pencil drawings it really is uh the kind of the big secret and uh, the secret ingredient for having really good drawings olive earth is another kind of greeny color a deep green That's the brown ochre again going over the top. The next colour I'm using is sepia red, which is a brown colour, kind of like a medium brown. Again, going over that bit at the top where there's shadows, really accentuating the shadows. As I say, shadows and highlights are going to make your drawings pop. I felt like the brown ochre was perhaps a little bit too brown for the eye, so I decided to just add a bit of a brighter yellow to blend out those sections. By this point, it's on top of so many layers that, you know, it's not going to be super bright, but it should um, add a little bit of lightness to the bottom of the eye. Um, and I think it does make it look more 3D, actually. At the bottom you can see there is uh, some highlights that I've missed so I'm just going back over them with my white pencil just to make sure that I'm marking out the lightest sections. Now you've got all those little lines that come out of the iris um, they look kind of weird at the moment but and they look a bit like a spider <laughs> but once everything's blended out they'll fade into the background and they'll make it look really, really realistic. Um, so yeah, going in with my black here to really darken up the middle. See, that already looks so much better. Um, going around the outline again, we already marked these sections out with our chocolate pencil, but we're going to go over it now with the black and you can see how much darker that is really really accentuates the other colours in comparison Yeah, I am going to go on to the fur in a second. I just really want those highlights to come out a bit more. Yeah. 
as you can see at this point I'm literally swapping from pencil to pencil um, I just keep looking back at the image and back at my drawing making comparisons what's missing what have I got too much of or not enough of and then uh, just adding from there if you are following along your drawing will probably look different to mine at this point so just take a minute to look at your reference drawing and compare yours and see what is it that's missing do I need more brightness do the colours match have I got enough of the highlights and the shadows And it is just going over and over, putting in those tiny details that will make a massive difference. And as you can see, when I'm drawing the fur, I'm not using my pencil in the same way that I was doing for the eye. When I was actually drawing the inside of the eye, I was kind of using my pencil in a circular motion so that I didn't get any jagged edges. Um, but with the fur, because of course, fur is made up of lots and lots of little hairs, I'm drawing lots and lots and lots of lines. So I'm drawing in a much more linear way. And then using that cedar pencil to blend out. Again, it's really important to keep your pencil sharp, especially for the fur, so that you can make out the individual hairs. Um, just makes it look so much more realistic if you've got a sharp pencil. So there, that's what I mean by the little lines that I'm drawing for the fur. Then I'm going to put a tiny bit of ink blue in. Um, this is just for the black. It's almost like a bluish black. I just find that adding the blue makes it a lot, lot of a deeper black and makes it much more realistic. But you don't need much. Um, and then I'd go back over it again with a, with a black or a chocolate pencil. So that obviously you don't want it to look like it actually has blue fur. <laughs> Again, I just keep noticing little things in the eye that I just keep going back to. And 
any shadows that I maybe missed out, any little details that I could have added. Um, I'm actually going to get my Faber-Castell little paint pen, I don't know what you call them, um, but you can use like a white gel pen or any kind of white pen that you've got. Um, and just because a white pen is so, so bright in comparison to pencils. And if you do have a really bright highlight that we do have in this picture, it's a really good little technique. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna fill in with that pen, as you can see, and then make sure you go over it, otherwise it does just look a bit artificial. But you can see that's already made it look so much more realistic. You can see the little hairs reflected in that highlight. Kind of the same, like on a human eye, you get eyelashes reflected. Um, it makes it look so much more realistic already. So back to the fur, adding in the orange and gold colours. Loads and loads and loads of little lines. couple blended into the black there. Again, the fur is just a case of really just adding layer upon layer, looking at your picture, comparing where the darkest areas are, where the orange areas are, where the sort of white areas are, and then adding those colours. And these lines, you can do them really quickly, really like rushed, as long as they're all going in the right direction, because I know that drawing a hundred little lines is very time consuming. Um, as you can see here, I'm literally powering through, <laughs> literally just to, as long as the hairs are going in the right direction, it's, it's fine. Then using that white to blend them out. The white is such a good colour for blending. If you don't have any of those fancy blending tools or blending brushes and things, um, it's a very good tool for blending out, it's the white. Just adding in a few different shades of orange and yellow, um, but I think that's nearly there. Just using the white to put in some random hairs that go in the opposite direction. Really make sure that your pencil is sharp and thin enough to do this. Again, blending out and also adding those little random hairs will make it look a lot more realistic. So there it is. I hope you've enjoyed.